Great to have you back here on The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. It's now time for us to get straight to the papers and see what major stories have made the headlines this morning. Kicking off with the Punch newspapers. It uh, should be on your screen in just a few seconds. And of course, uh, we will be introducing our guest right after. Yes, there you have it. The Punch experts worry Okonjo Wela Ahmed differ on Nigeria's debts. Yeah, we will borrow more to build infrastructure, federal government insists. Nigeria's debt-to-GDP ratio rose from 29% to 35%, says WTO boss. And funds spent on debt servicing by government worrisome, say experts. All right, uh, ex-FIRS officials rearranged over $4 billion uh, for tours not performed. Press Council bill terribly draconian and worse than Decree 4, says ex-Governor Oshoba. And um, also, petrol smuggling persists. 102 million liters consumed in May, says the NNPC. Sheikh Gumi alleges collusion as uh, 200 are killed in Zamfara, despite Buhari's no-fly zone. Uh, the cleric's allegation is an attempt to undermine troops and uh, uh, denigrate the military, says the uh, Nigerian army. Apparently, Sheikh Gumi says the army is um, uh, colluding with bandits. Still on the pond this morning, soldiers engage, in, uh, engage policemen in brawl to free detained colleague. One dead, vehicles vandalized as robbers attack motorists on Long Bridge. Baby born in prison, special boy, says on his wife at christening of the release and SARS protester's son. Two arrested for supplying herbal drink that killed 10 uh, Quara family members. And uh, Soludo emerges Abga governorship candidate. Faction suspends ex-CBN helmsman. Those are the stories on the punch this morning. Um, let's go over now to the Daily Sun. The headline reads, Military colluding with bandits, alleges Gumi, says herdsmen better than IPOB. Allegation force targeted at the denigrating troops, and that's according to the army. Immigration CG reveals how security operatives supply bandits' arms and munition. NDDC forensic audits reports ready next month. Akpabio. Anambra Guba, Abga PDP crisis will give us victory, APC Patriots. Soludo wins Abga primary. North won't ask for separate republic, ACF. Plans meeting with Afeni Ferry Ohanese, South South leaders. $951 million payment, Diri appeals to federal government to implement judgment. Buhari knows nothing about controversial media bills. That's according to the presidency. Lawan says, 37 billion Naira National Assembly renovation budget. We have indicated. FCTA blames FEC for leaking roof. Federal government governors sued over financial autonomy for judiciary. 2023 presidency, Northern, El Northern Youth Elders Forum endorses Governor Bala Mohammed. Attack on schools, NSTDC to set up female squad. 10 die after consuming herbal mixture in Kwara State. All right, now moving to the daily independent newspapers. Security operatives working with bandits, Gumi alleges, says IPOB kills security agents, but bandits only kidnap for money. Comment to vilify military and undermine troop sacrifices, and that's a response from the Nigerian army. Senate indicts NSA over $2.3 billion, 1 billion naira, 196,000 euros NPA funds. Vows to expose government agencies refusing to account for public funds. Also in Anambra State, Soludo picks Abga gubernatorial ticket. OKK factions um, suspends him. Senate blames FCDA for National Assembly leaking roof. Protest uh, report uh, alleging approval of 37 billion naira for National Assembly renovation. And we have no hand in controversial media bills at the National Assembly, says the presidency. Uh, we also can see here, um, in response to the ECOWAS court, the federal government says, Twitter ban, not human rights violation. CSOs weigh legal option against presidency and Senate over Loretta Onochia. Fayami Bagudu, Badaru, lobby Buhari to extend Buni committee tenure. And Bauchi governor to decide on 2023 presidency in three weeks. All right, those are the stories that we can uh, take on the Daily Independent. Lastly, on the Guardian newspaper, airfares spike as aviation fuel nears 300 naira a litre at airports.
Beware of debt stress, distress. Okonje Wela, additional one African leaders. Indian stabbed in Lagos, but on Long Bridge robbery dies. Reject Onoche's INEC nomination on dual nationality ground. CSOs tell National Assembly. Arewa leaders vow to oppose Nigeria's breakup. EFCC rearranged three FIRS directors, six others over alleged 4.5 billion naira fraud. And lastly, here on the Guardian newspaper, INEC insists Abga won't participate in Anambra Gopa polls. Um, good morning, Mr. Ezekiel Iyaitok. Good morning. Always a pleasure to be with you. Thank you for joining us. Um, taking a look at the papers this morning, uh, we see two um, papers, the Daily Sun and the Daily Independent, uh, talk about insecurity and Sheikh Gumi's opinion. Uh, Gumi here on the Daily Independent is saying that security operatives are working with bandits. And on the punch on the Daily Sun, he's saying that military um, colluding with bandits. Uh, that's according to Gumi. Um, how do you see the story? An allegation here from Sheikh Gumi. I'm saying that the military and the bandits are working hand in hand. Yeah. I'm really concerned uh, about the, uh, I'm not sure if I should use the word utterances of um, Sheikh Gumi. He's somebody that has a reasonable number of following on account of his being a Muslim cleric. It's very important. As a result, whatever he states, he should know that it is going to be understood, interpreted within the context of his office. Now, there are many of us non-Muslims that really want to understand the Muslim region, what they stand for, what they believe. And a man like Sheikh Gumi is a very, very veritable face of the Muslim religion. But some of his utterances of recent have cast a lot of doubts in the minds of very, very neutral people as per whether it is him as an individual speaking or as a teacher of the Muslim religion, so to speak, te teaching. Because when you say that some people only kidnap for money while others kill as a result that you know, those who kidnap for money are people you should negotiate and dialogue with. It, it, it rattles something in my brain. Secondly, when he comes to cast a lot of aspersion on the military, my problem is not because there isn't some truth to some extent. They say there's no smoke without fire. But you see, you have to be careful with your diction, with your choice of words. You have to be extremely laconic at a stage in your life where you don't have to paint everybody with the same brush because it can dampen the, the, the enthusiasm and the zeal of the military, okay? You, you must be able to isolate. I saw the Director General of Customs making very, very hard statements. I think those videos went viral. Those of you that are compromising this will not happen except this happened. Do you understand me? He was, he was careful to address the bad eggs in the system. In every system, we know bad eggs exist. But when you carry the same brush and paint everybody, it's not wise. But this is the most worrisome part of it. There is a man called Reverend uh, Father Kuka. You read his statement, and Muslims and Christians alike agree that he addresses fundamental issues, okay? Now, within hours of him making any of those statements, the presidency will, will, will literally abuse him verbally. But you know, all these things that Sheikh Gumi has been saying, you are a journalist, so you know more than I do. Please let me know one instance that the presidency has cautioned him or called him to order. So the question is, could he be a voice of Esau speaking through Jacob? Or there's something I need to know how to draw the line because there is something definitely missing. Mm. Okay. That's actually a very uh, good point uh, you've made.
Um, I hope that we come back to it. You know, let's also move uh, still on the punch this morning. Uh, there's a story there about petrol smuggling. It says um, 102 million liters uh, were consumed in May. You know, and of course, analysts have put, you know, the number of vehicles in Nigeria side by side, of course, businesses and all of that. And, you know, constant and, you know, always said, you know, that Nigeria cannot consume that much petrol in a month. Um, the NNPC is saying that this figures are that high because of smuggling. Um, what's your response to the NNPC's uh, statements? I, I, I think that I have maintained a singular <laughs> position even when PVP was in power. This concept of subsidy of fuel, supposedly for the poor, is one of the greatest frauds in this country. Fraud on the poor, fraud on the nation, fraud on the system. And they, let them just say they want to have this system that they're able to make all sorts of money and everything, I have no problem with it. But please don't tie it on the poor. And I've said it, I as an individual, because of how God has blessed me and the things I have to do, if you come into my house, you probably have up to six, seven SUVs. I consume more fuel daily than the whole of my village put together, if not the whole of my world put together. I consume more fuel as an individual. And I am nothing compared to the executives that have all manner of fleets of vehicles, they have all manner, and you are subsidizing this fuel supposedly so that the poor will not suffer. That is the, the height of, 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 of balderdash, pardon my language. It doesn't make sense. Provide common transportation for the poor. Let the fuel have a market reflective price so you don't have to smuggle. You don't have to tell us all this you know, equalization and all those stories that run into billions on a daily basis. It doesn't make sense. So for as long as we perpetrate this fraud, we keep having figures that just are just mind-boggling, figures that don't even make sense. You have three cars and you are buying for what, five cars? I mean, how do you? Who does that? Mm. All right. We see also that in Anambra State, Soludo has picked the um, Abga Guba ticket and uh, Okeke fa fa faction of the party has suspended him. You know, what do you think about what's playing out in Anambra at the moment? I think that we have more serious national issues. Leave politicians to play their game. Let us talk what will help the common man. That's mm. politics. And it will, also, it will always be there. Okay. It's about game of your interest. It has nothing to do with the common man. So let's leave them and move on, if you don't mind. All right. Do you have a comment on CSOs um, here saying that um, they should basically sue Loretta Onoche and the National Assembly should reject her candidature um, as INEC commissioner on the grounds that she's a card card member of the APC and she has dual citizenship of Nigeria and the UK? I have so much comment on it. It goes back to the presidency. The Bible states that all things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. The same Bible also says that wisdom is profitable to direct. You have a woman that even APC members will agree that this lady is a committed lawyer. By the time I at my age and stage in life wear a dress that has the president's face top to bottom i mean no louder statements to be made you, you could support a system but you'll be discreet about it everybody has certain level of political you know line lineage or things you know but when you take it to to an absurd level it marks you out as somebody that is fanatically partisan. And such a person, it is very difficult for you to put that person in charge of an electoral body. To wait for these people to go to, to court or this. The president should have known from the beginning that she really wouldn't be somebody to be put up for such as that. Because you want to Give the face of an INEC that is impartial, an INEC that can be trusted, 
an INEC that does not lean to any side. You want to give Nigerians a, an electoral body that Nigerians, you know, justice should not only be done, but should be seen to be done. So, that should be your Mr. guiding principle Mr. with Mr. INEC. You can do other things, but not INEC. So do you think the presidency doesn't know, or the people who they have... They know. They know. They couldn't just be bothered. You know, this, this, there's a way that we have come to a nation where the president is not a servant, but a monarch. And it's very, very, very important we look at this. The president is your servant. That should be called to order. That should be afraid of the people. That went begging for a mandate, begging the people to please, please, on three occasions, he didn't, on the fourth occasion, the people said, okay, now he gets that mandate and becomes lord over the people. And whatever the people say, he carries like Nero headphones, puts here, even when Rome is burning. It doesn't make sense. The president and the presidency have to come to know that they are chief servants and not lords. And when they do that, they will start to care about what happens in the system. A leader does not pander to everything that the public says. No, you provide leadership. But somewhere along the line, the public will get to know that, that oh, you took a decision in their larger interest. But when it comes to a situation where national issues that, I mean, look at the social media. Nigerians are awash. They are incensed. And you just act as if, excuse me, like we are irritants. As far as I'm concerned, I see myself as an irritant to the president, where my opinion can only annoy him. And not somebody is like, oh, what's the idea of saying? Okay, that makes sense. And then explains to me why he took that decision. He owes me that duty, that obligation. And some people are like, does he know who is talking about the president? And that's the mentality we must change. Our right. governors must report to us. They are our servants. The way they live is my taxpayer's money. The money they eat is our taxpayer's money. These are our servants. It, it, it's an error that the servants are on horseback and the, 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 the princes are on foot. That is the situation in Nigeria today. All right. And these elected officers, um, they need to think twice. Okay, let, let's um, you know, move to something you know, that I'm sure we must have heard you know, a lot of times. And it's statements from the presidency saying they will expose this person or expose that person. On the Daily Independent, it says here the Senate indicts uh, NSA. Uh, over uh, $2.3 billion, uh, 1 billion naira, 196,000 uh, euros NPA funds. It says that it vows to expose government agencies refusing to account for public funds. Uh, so, like I said, it's not the first time we're here and the government threatened to expose uh, persons who, you know, may be mismanaging government funds. But we never actually get uh, to see that happen. Uh, what's your reaction to yeah once another story again uh, similar? Yeah, brother. You know, I've learned the, the I've come to terms to, with um, the strategy that um, our government people adopt. When they want you to come and negotiate and discuss with them, they come to us in the public and say, "We are going to expose you. We are going to do this. We are going to do that." They come to the public and make those public statements, but. As soon as you go back to them and say, bros, bros, take it easy. Okay, I'll do it with it. It ends there. So I think that they come to the public, they use us as bait. You know, they use us to say, look, we're going to do this. And the people now come behind them at night and they say to, and the case just becomes a family matter. And my question is, why do you want to come and tell us these things? I am going to do Why? Why don't you just do it? I think the media should stop, you know, reporting the, this, their... I'm going to, I'm going to. Let the media start reporting their actions. I have, I have, not their intentions. Because we become heavy on intention, I will, I'm going to, you know, on threat. We become very good at that. It's become a good tool to them, just for the people involved to come and discuss and negotiate with them. And then it becomes a family thing. It's a strategy that is working for them, but we need to wake up, we need to wise up. When the public starts to show no interest in all those things and say, please, don't tell me intentions, report actions, report actions. When we do that, I think they will start to think twice about it.
All right. Okay, on the Punch newspaper, there's a story about Nigeria's debt profile. It reads, endless borrowing, experts worry. Okunjewela Ahmed differ on Nigeria's debt. So while Nigeria's um, finance minister uh, put our debt to GDP ratio at 29%, Okonje Wheeler actually said it had risen to 35%. And this was at an A African Development Bank high-level knowledge event um, that happened on Wednesday. So um, Ahmed here is now saying that Nigeria plans to still borrow more to fund its infrastructure projects. But Sokonje Wele, on the other hand, is saying that Nigeria's debt is, is increasing and that our debt profile has increased to over 33 um, trillion naira as of March 31st. Where do you come in, Mr. Yair Uh You see... Hello? Can you hear us, uh, Mr. Yair the, the thing is that part of... Um, things that we operate by our templates. They look at facts and figures, and those facts and figures are available to them. As a result, we need to be careful uh, as Nigerians to really start to look at facts and figures in our larger interest. The borrowing has gone. All those don't tell me about debt to be ratio and blah, blah. It doesn't make sense. We are borrowing too much, and I can't see where the money is going to. And then NSA is being asked to bring this amount of money. Why don't we just start by looking inwards? Where is all the monies that we are saying are missing here or unaccounted for there? Let us start from home. When we have exhausted and Nigerians have come to terms that we have exhausted by mopping up all the funds that have been illegally acquired in Nigeria. That is step one. Step two. We all agree that any borrowing must be based on infrastructure and not borrowing for services, for, for consumption, which doesn't make sense. At that time, we will ask ourselves, do we need to just make do with what we have or move on? I think this conversation has to go beyond the National Assembly, who have become extremely complicit. The Nigerian system needs to come in. The professional bodies need to come in. That's why the National Consultative Front setting up certain bodies to objectively and professionally profile the things we are doing is the way that we should go. Citizens should rise up. Don't always rise up in arms or oh, protest. It doesn't make sense. Rise up in being strategic development partners with the system. Let's join NESG the National Consultative Front, and other professional bodies, let's come together, form a team to network with the federal government. Because sooner or later, in the next two years, they are off. And whatever mess that has been put is left to us and our children and the children's children. So the time has come when we must look at the concept of citizens' responsibility and start to play that role. I'm tired of, 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 of um, what's the word? Of, are accusing government. I'm tired. And, and we need solutions. Blaming anybody, blame game never solves any problem. We need solutions. All right. Um, Mr. Isaac I talk. thank you very much uh, for your time and for joining us this uh, Thursday morning. Thank you. We wish you a beautiful day ahead. Thanks. It's a pleasure and a privilege. Thanks for having me. I'm really, really, really grateful. Thanks once again. Stay with us. Uh, we'll take a short break. When we come back, what happened on this day in history, uh, the 24th of June, many years ago. I'm going back to just last year, actually, uh, but we'll share with you when we come back.